Hello, Chris Kiak here. I'm a steel construction technology consultant, and I've been in the steel industry for over 20 years and detailing most of that. And I've uh, used both SDS2 and Tecla as a power user and as have even done customization and programming on both softwares. And I just wanted to make a video of, for, of some clarifications of this article I just saw from SDS2, uh, comparing SDS2 versus Tecla. And so I'm just gonna quickly go down through each of these line items and just add some clarifications and my own personal independent opinion on some of these. Um, the first one is connection design. Uh, yeah, hands down, uh, SDS2 has built-in connection design and it's got a great job in Fabricator setup where you're sort of guided through different settings and things and preferences that you want. Uh, for your connections to automatically be applied in the model. Um, I, I genuinely feel it's much simpler uh, to set up your job for connection design and it's built in compared to Tecla. Um, with Tecla, you do uh, have the ability to like link Excel spreadsheets and set up sort of connection standards and things like that, um, but it's not directly integrated um, you know, out of the box. You have to do some setup. And if you really want full on connection design, then you really have to buy a third party application such as QNect or Giza or some of the other integrations that are out there. So I will give it to, to SDS2, they, they really above and beyond. If you want integrated connection design and intelligent detailing with that connection design in the model, then I, I will really say that SDS2's got this. Now, as far as live multi-user modeling goes, um, honestly, I've, I've worked in production environment on both and the live multi-user model isn't as cracked up as you might think it is. In reality, you're not going to be having multiple users working in the same area on the same members at the same time. And in fact, SDS2 has member locks that sort of protect you from doing that. You'll get warning messages and things telling you, uh, you know, that you can't do that. And so, um, in Tecla, there is this, there's two ways of doing multi-user. There is the old multi-user functionality, which I will say is, is slow and outdated and only works on really well on a local area network. And you do have to spend this time saving and, and do it in a very specific order. So I will say that SDS2 had a pretty good leg up on, on Tecla in this from the old multi-user functionality. But with the cloud-based model sharing functionality in Tecla, where it only shares change packets in and out, actually shows and highlights the changes, um, as you kind of and manages those changes coming in and out to the cloud. I will say that um, the model sharing functionality in a real production management point of view is pretty darn good on Tecla. And, and the live multi-user um, in SDS2 also limits the undo and redo capability. Whereas in Tecla, because everything's managed in your own individual session until you share out or read in changes with uh, model sharing, uh, really, there's a, a pretty unlimited uh, undo and redo uh, to some level unless you save the model and create drawings and stuff. And so in that case, like uh, this is just kind of not a big win for SDS2 in this case with the live model or multi-user because I wouldn't really, I wouldn't necessarily use it as much as you think you might in, in real production. You're going to have users working in different areas. I do like the Tecla's model sharing. It is uh, an add-on that you do have to buy per user. Um, but it just manages the changes and it really allows you to easily work in a global environment. Automated piece marking. Here's another one that in, in actual production, um, you know, it is true that in Tecla there is a separate numbering or piece marking process that you that you enact. And on some level from a from a project management point of view, that's actually kind of good. I really don't do the numbering until I'm getting ready to start doing my drawings or if I have to do an ABM and I need to assign ABM marks with numbering. Um, then I'll do those specific numberings at that time. Um, just so that way I can make sure that the model is just doing a complete comparison of everything and I get better quantity uh, combining and things like that. Um, you can progressively number the model as you go in Tecla and some users do that just uh, so that way they're numbering over time. But I just wanted to make sure that folks understand that this whole having a specific numbering process versus numbering on the fly like SDS2 has, it, it's not a huge differentiator like in production and you actually might want to specifically manage when you are assigning numbers, um, especially as you're doing changes. Um, sometimes when you're doing late stage changes during fabrication, you might want to change how your numbering is set up and, and is working and you want to have a very specific numbering process or somebody's in control of the piece marking and the numbering, especially in a multi-user environment. So again, this is one of those ones where in real production, there's advantages to either one, both SDS2 and Tecla's workflow. On drawing customization, um, this one really stuck out at me and I actually don't like how the customization of drawing requires advanced programming skills. Um, that's not true at all in Tecla. 
In fact, there, there is the ability to uh, really control the, the way drawings are dimensioned using their setup and a lot of their options and dialog boxes. I will say that there's way more customization like ability on Tecla because you know it's a global, you know, it, it kind of came up as a global software and so supporting lots of different environments. But this thing that says that it requires to be a programmer to change it, that's not true. In its simplest form in Tecla, all you have to do is clean up a beam or a column drawing, and then you have the intelligent cloning option. You select a drawing, you select a, some other similar beams and columns to all. They might be a slightly different length, have some slightly different connections on the member, and you can actually clone an existing drawing you've cleaned up and, and just tell Tecla to try to intelligently clone these other like members to that. And that doesn't require programming at all. And then even the main setups so of just going through the dialog box for automated dimensioning and things like that also doesn't require um, any coding. Now, the support experts piece, so that's the next uh, part here. Um, you know, again, there there's US-based support for Tecla as well. I mean, there's a whole help desk uh, group of folks in the US and, and Canada um, and in North America. So you, you get a frontline set of support via email um, or on the phone and, you know, everybody speaks English and things like that. So I would just, just say that, you know, it's not just all online support or anything like that. You have live uh, help and support help desk just like you do with SDS2 with Tecla. Um, the flexible payment options, this is pretty true. Like, um, you know, subscriptions, uh, Tecla has just recently in the past year or so completely gone to a subscription model. And so um, this takes away your option for perpetual licenses. And so there is an advantage sometimes to having your perpetual licenses and, and just knowing that you've got the software and you can use it for five, the next five, 10 years and don't necessarily have to buy the new versions and the subscription update. So that is a real tangible option uh, with SDS2 and it's nice to have both the subscription model as well as the perpetual model. Lastly, we have interoperability here. And um, you know, I just wanna comment on this. The way this is kind of worded, um, you know, and, and it is nice to see two green check boxes next to both of these because both SDS2 and Tecla have really great interoperability. Um, for a long time, SDS2 had great uh, CNC exports and varied CNC exports um, for specific like kind of um, CNC manufacturers, especially back in the early 2000s. And Tecla was just DSTV only for the longest time. Um, but I would say that the, you know, the pendulum kind of swung, you know, with Tecla because of its uh, API or application programming interface. And so a lot of uh, partners, CNC manufacturers, robotic welders, um, MIS applications, ERP applications, they all can very easily like uh, do any kind of data integrations and things um, with the objects and quantities and things in the model with both Tecla and SDS2. So in this front here, um, I feel like there isn't one that is a stronger leader than the other. There are maybe some specific, um, you know, imports, exports that are a little bit better in one area or another, but overall, both are pretty equally paired in this front. So again, I just wanted to quickly go through, and if anybody has any questions, like um, if you're an SDS2 user and you're thinking about buying some tech licenses, or if you're a Tecla user and you've been looking at SDS2 and you want some just thoughts and feedback on either one, um, I'd be happy to kind of go over that with you. Like, um, just feel free to reach out to me with my contact information and I can give you my just non-biased uh, feedback on the strengths and, you know, potential weaknesses on each system and what's going to best fit for you. But I just, I just saw this and whenever I see these kind of, um, these sort of articles, especially from a specific vendor, I always just want to go out there and, you know, really just provide as much neutral information as possible. If you found this content useful, please subscribe to our channel and press the alerts button to be notified when we upload new content.